Hebrews chapter 7, beginning at the 20th verse. And in as much as not without an oath he was made priest. For those priests were made without an oath, but this with an oath by him that said unto him, the Lord swear and will not repent. Thou art priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. By so much was Jesus made a sultry, surely of a better testament. Put your finger there and turn to Romans chapter 8. Verse 34. Who is, who is he that condemneth? It is Christ that died, yet rather that he is risen again, who is even at the right hand of God, who also maketh intercession for us. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or soul? I want to know what can separate us from the love of God. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray that you would minister this morning. Speak a word to your people, Lord. Somebody came looking for salvation. Somebody came looking for deliverance. Somebody came needing healing, Lord. And you are the great I am. And there's nothing that we have need of that is not already in you. So, Lord, let it come out today. And let your word address every situation. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. This morning I want to talk from the subject of out with the old and in with the new. I won't be before you long. Out with the old and in with the new. Um, what if I told you that there is a car being made that will be the car of all cars? And you could have this car free of charge. And you'll never need another car again. Now, some of us already know we're going to keep driving the Pinto we've been driving because of the sentimental value. Some of us, I know, uh, the, 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 the whole idea of that sounds too good to be true. Some of us, I know that, you know, we, we, we want to test drive it, but we, we're afraid because we think that there's going to be some attachments to it. So we run from the idea of having something that can be free and you not have to pay a dime for it. And you'll never need another car to take its place again. Now, I gave you this analogy using a car because I look at grace the same way. It's a vehicle. It carries you. Oh, y'all better catch this. See, some of us are riding on grace right now. And if it wasn't for the grace of God, a lot of us wouldn't even be here. Oh, come on, somebody. If it wasn't for the grace of God, if it wasn't for God making a way out of no way, even when we didn't deserve it, even when I wasn't doing right, if it wasn't for his grace, See, the grace of God operates like a vehicle. It carries you to places that you can't afford to go. I wish I had just two or three witnesses here. It carries you to a place that you can't even afford to go. As a matter of fact, if I put a price tag on it, you would never be able to afford it, but it's free. 
All you got to do is accept it. Thank you, God. And you'll never need nothing else but it. Scripture is very interesting this morning because it talks about the priesthood. The priesthood as we know it comes from the Levit Leviticus priesthood. Leviticus comes from the root word Levi. And Levi is the son of Jacob. Out of the tribe of Levi comes the priesthood. And it starts with Aaron the older brother of Moses. Ain't that funny? Moses is the emancipator, but his older brother is the priest. Y'all gonna catch this in a minute. It starts with the older brother, and he has the responsibility of the high priest of going into the holies of holies. But what they would have to do, Pastor Smart, is tie a rope around And when they tied the rope around him, they attached bells to the rope. So whenever they went into the holies of holies, if they wasn't right, and they didn't hear the bells ringing anymore, they knew they were going to have to pull him out of there. Because he wasn't right to be in the presence of God. See, that is out of the Leviticus priesthood. But what the scripture says is that God has given you a better testament, which suggests that if the Leviticus priesthood had been all that it needed to be, there would have been no need for Christ. But because there is a need, Watch what happens. He becomes a better testament because he goes himself. <laughs> oh, y'all missed that. Into the holies of holies. See, that, now, now, what's interesting about Jesus is, is that priests prepared sacrifice and they offered it to God. But how many know that Jesus was the sacrifice and the offering? He, he, he's the sacrifice and the offering. Watch this. Now, there can never be anybody better than that because nobody else can offer themselves as a sacrifice unless Jesus does it first. Watch this, watch this, watch this, watch this. So what it says is, is that there's, there, there's nobody, uh, he's made with an oath. Psalms 10 and 4, 110 and 4, says the Lord had sworn and will not repent. Thou art priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. Now I wanted to know why is this after the order of Melchizedek? Melchizedek is a priest that is both king and priest. He's both king and priest. Not only is he king and priest, but Melchizedek is very interesting in the fact that nobody knows his parents. Nobody knows his beginning nor his ending. Oh, y'all missed that. Y'all didn't catch that. See, he, Jesus is the Alpha and the Omega. He's the beginning and the ending. Nobody knows his beginning nor his ending. Watch this. Now, this is after the order of Melchizedek. Now, when Abraham paid his tithes, he didn't tie to the Leviticus priesthood, but what he tied to was Melchizedek. See, a lot of folks say, I don't pay tithes because it's under the law. It wasn't under the law when he tithed. Oh, I wish I had somebody. The Mosaic law hadn't even been established yet, but yet he tithed to Melchizedek. Now, watch this. The Leviticus priesthood, again, is, after, is out of the Levi tribe. But Jesus is out of a different tribe. 
Jesus is not out of the Leviticus priesthood. Jesus comes out of the lineage of Judah. Oh, I wish I had somebody. Judah means praise. Oh, come on, somebody. See, see, there's no wonder that his forefather, David, was a worshiper. Because he understood what he was producing. Now, he's out of a different priesthood. Watch this. Now, he's out of a different priesthood, and as he operates out of the priesthood he's out, out of, it's not the same. Because he's not bound by rituals. Oh, I wish that. See, see, see uh, we were talking about cars earlier. Sometimes people like things that are religious because that's all they've done. That's all they know. But anybody in here want to try something new? Anybody in here tired of the same old thing? See, I don't know about you, but every now and again, I praise God for the vehicle I drive. But if God is offering me something better, I want to drive what he's offering. I wish I had somebody. I, I, I get tired of the old stuff over and over and over again. Even leftovers, if you keep them too long, it'll begin to mold. You got to be careful holding on to old stuff. Am I talking to anybody in here? Sometimes we hold on to stuff way too long. Mm. So, 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 so now the text says, the text says that he would not be a man that he would repent. And he's a better testament. But Romans, Romans 8 says, Who, who is he that is condemned? We're talking about Jesus. And then it says, is it Christ who died? See, all the other priests made sacrifices. Jesus is the sacrifice. Watch this. Watch this. Watch this. Watch this. Now, here's the Baptist part of me. Jesus went to Calvary's cross. And he allowed them to take his life. In John chapter 18, he declares that he's key. John chapter 19, he tells them, no man can take my life except I lay it down. Watch this. So he allows them to take his life. Watch this. John chapter 12, Jesus says, now my soul is troubled. <laughs> what shall I say, Father? Save me from this moment, but it's for this moment in which I've come. I came to die. Watch this. I came knowing I was a sacrifice. I came knowing that I was a lamb. I came knowing that I was shedding my blood. Watch this. So now he's dying. The Bible says that they nailed nails in his hands. Oh, I wish I could close, but I can't close right there. I believe the fact that they nailed nails in his hands was symbolic of him grabbing a tighter hold on us. Why do you say that? Because the Bible says no man can pluck thee out of my hand. Oh, they put a nail in his hand. It caused excruciating pain. It caused his hand to clench. Thank God for the nail in his hand. Not only that, but they put a thornery crown upon his head. And they didn't just place it up there, but they pushed it down. They, they pushed it down that he might bleed around his brow. But I'm kind of glad about that because I understand that there was a curse put on us. That every man should earn his keep by the sweat of his brow. But when they pushed that crown down, the blood broke the curse. 
Not only did it break the curse, but now I understand the scripture that says he was wounded for my transgressions, bruised for my iniquity, and by his stripes I'm healed, and the chastisement of his peace, of my peace was upon him. I thank him for the blood on his head. Not only did he bleed there, but he bled at his feet. Oh, they put nails in his feet, Pastor Smart. They, they made sure that he was stuck on the cross and they put one foot on top of the other and they drove nails in his feet. And when they began to bleed at his feet, what he declared was, everywhere my feet shall tread upon, I'll give it to you. Because I've already paid the cost uh, with the blood. Oh, I wish I had somebody. Not only did he bleed there, but they had to make sure he was dead. So they pierced him in the side. Oh, I wish I had somebody. I believe salvation came right there. Because the Bible declared that blood and water came out. And so we came up with the song, What can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious is his blood that washes me white as snow. Nothing but the blood. I am say, I'm sorry. Woo, nothing but the blood. I don't know who I'm talking to here today, but I don't know where you came, but you may need something to clean you up. No matter how bad things have been, his blood will wash it. Ah, Jesus. Ah, Jesus. His blood will wash it away. Listen, I ain't ready yet. I'm not ready yet. I'm not ready yet. His blood will wash it away. I don't know who I'm talking to here, but if you came with a nasty habit, uh, his blood will wash it away. Uh, if you came in here sick in your body, uh, his blood is able to heal you. If you came here and you were distressed and oppressed, uh, his blood will provide uh, a way out for you. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Woo. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. So the scripture goes on and it says, he's risen. Watch this, watch this. See, all of the sacrifices before Christ stayed dead. They never came back alive again. But what Jesus does, he demonstrates with a man called Lazarus. Lazarus is dead, sleeping in the grave. He's with rigor mortis. He's stiff. And there's a stench because in those days they didn't drain blood from you. The blood stayed in you. And so he was just wrapped in clothing in the grave. Watch this. So Jesus said, I've got to demonstrate so that they know that I'm more than just a provider. So that they know that I'm more than just a healer. That they know that I'm more than just a way maker. But I'm the king of kings and the lord of lords. I'm able to do exceedingly abundantly above all you can ever think or imagine. Watch what happens now. Mary calls and she sends for him. And Jesus comes and Mary says, if you'd have came earlier, my brother wouldn't have died. If you'd have came earlier. And Jesus says to him, you shall see him again. And Mary with her smart self said, I know I'm going to see him again. In that great getting up morning, I, I know I'm going to see him again. But what he says is, you don't understand who I am. I, I am the resurrection. Woo. Watch this, watch this. Jesus stands at the tomb and he begins to call out, Lazarus, come forward. Lazarus, get up. And he walks to the entrance of the tomb. 
Jesus don't like the state that he's in because he's still with grave clothes. And he tell the clothes to loosen and let him go. Oh, come on, somebody. Watch this. Watch this. Watch this. Watch this. And the scripture goes on to say that Lazarus was sitting at the table when Mary anointed his feet. Oh, come on, somebody. She was anointing his feet for burial. She was anointing him for burial. And, and while she was pouring out this expensive oil, Lazarus was right by him because he had been raised from the dead. Watch this. Now watch this. Somebody, you about to get victory. See, you've been dead too long. And God wants the resurrection. Come on, somebody. You've been dead too long. You took yourself out of the game and you thought you wasn't worth it. You talk more, you talk bad about yourself more than anybody else did. And God says, I'm about to resurrect that dead thing. You've been out of the game too long, but I want to raise you up. I, I want you to know that, 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 that I'm more that you're more than a conqueror. If I can conquer the grave, so shall you. You're about to be raised up. Somebody's been sentenced to death, but I want to sentence you to life. I came to tell somebody that Christ died that you may have life more abundantly. Watch this. Watch this. Watch this. Now, now I'm going. Now I'm going. Here it is. Here it is. I, I'm, I'm about to wrap it up. Oh, I did good. Look, I, I got y'all less than 20 minutes. Let me see. Let me see. Watch this. Watch this. So now, now the scripture says he's risen. And not only is he risen, but he's making intercession. Oh, see, that's what we've been talking about. See, he died for a cause, but he ain't stopped working after he got up. He began to intercede. See, uh, when you get up, you need to start praying for somebody else. Oh, I wish I had somebody. Watch this. Watch this. You know what's amazing about this text? That, that, that uh, Jason's, the fact that he was risen and that he's praying is the, is the fact that he had to pray for some dead folk. Y'all missed that. See, 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 listen. We were all sinners. We were all dead. Oh, come on, somebody. But he was making intercession for some dead folk. Some of us had addictions. Uh, some of us were in sexual relationships that wasn't proper. Some of us were just broke wild out there living. But I didn't know he died anyhow. Oh, Jesus. Watch this. Watch this. Watch this. So he made intercession. Watch this. Watch this. He, he's interceding. After he rises. Watch this. Watch what the text says. The text says... Who shall separate us from his love? <laughs> oh, yeah. so, oftentimes, people date in mind of looking for a soulmate. But I come to tell you, the only true soulmate you can have is Jesus. Oh, come on, somebody. Nobody's going to love you like he will. No matter what you do, he's still there. Even when you act a fool, he'll be there. Even when you walk out, he'll be there. No matter what you say to him, he's going to be there. No matter how you treat him, he's going to be there. The Bible says he's faithful and just to forgive. What can separate me <laughs> from the love of God? Oh, i got to get out of here now. What can separate me from the love of God? Shall tribulation. How many have been through something in here? That you can testify that his love brought you through. You know that you would have gave up and took your own life. As a matter of fact, somebody could probably testify that they tried to take their own life. And they were unsuccessful. I want to tell somebody, nothing can separate you 
from the love of God. Tribulation nor distress. How many have been depressed in here? How many have gone through stressful situations and you wondered how you were going to come out? And you wondered if you would ever see the light of day. Can't nothing separate you from the love of God. Not only distress, but persecution. Anybody ever been persecuted in here? Because you are a believer, people stuck their nose up. They treated you in a bad way. Don't you know that the more they persecute you, the greater his love becomes for you? What they do unto you, they're really doing unto him. They're not doing it unto you. And you got to know that his love is greater. Now I'm ready. Now he says, he says, no persecution, no famine. Anybody ever been hungry in the house where you didn't know where your next meal was coming from? I heard him say that I am the bread of life and you ain't got to worry because he's able to feed everybody. There are many stories of where he fed 5,000, where he fed 4,000, and each time he fed the multitude, the Bible declares that there were fragments left over because he's the God of abundance. I want to talk to somebody in here that's been going through that you don't have to experience famine because God is able to feed you. Not only that, anybody ever wondered if they would ever have another change of clothes? Anybody ever wondered if they would ever have another place to live? Well, I came by here to tell somebody that the word of God is real. And I heard him saying, I'm praying for you. I know you've been going through. You don't have a place to live. But I'm making an intercession for you. And the doors are going to open that no man can close. Somebody here, you're in need of a job. I heard him say, he's making a way for you. He's opening doors that no man can close. Why you been crying? He's been praying. Why you been complaining? He's been praying. And while he's praying, angels are on assignment working things out for you. I wish I had somebody here. Well, I got to close now. I got to get out of here. But before I go, there's one more thing I want to tell you. God I serve, he's able, how many know he's able, won't he make a way, won't he heal your body, won't he make a way, won't he be provided for you, ain't he an awesome God, what can separate me from the love of God, I heard a song to say, I was sinking deep in sin, far from the peaceful shore, seeking never to rise no more, but the master of the sea, like a sparing cry, and from the waters he lifted me, now say, am I? Anybody know he's a savior? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Out with the old, in with the new. I don't want to be bound to the law, but I want to be under the dispensation of grace. Because grace covers me when I mess up. Grace carries me when I can't carry myself. Grace opens doors for me. Grace takes me where my education won't. Grace takes me where I can enjoy it. Grace makes a way out of nowhere. I want to tell somebody, according to the scripture, he's full of truth and grace. I 
out with the old and with the new. I don't know about you, but I came to leave my vehicle. The one I used to travel in, it ain't got me very far, because I'm going to leave it right here today. I got to pick up the new car that it has for me. I'm trading my sorrows. I'm trading my pain for the joy of the Lord. I want to be like the songwriter that said this joy that I have. The didn't give it to me, and the world can't take it away. Give me an awesome God, a wonderful Savior. Ain't he all right? the old covenant he's nothing like the old testament he's a new testament it's a better covenant it's a better testament you know what testament means it's one's will his will for your life is better than the last one. You know how you know? The last one said, if you sin, you die. Bottom line. This one says, there's grace in there for you. There's grace in there for you. This one says, when you mess up, what I do is I turn to my father and I tell him, Daddy, I know they messed up, but I died for them. Give them another chance. This one says, when you mess up, Jesus turns and he makes intercession. And he reminds his daddy of the word. He says, Daddy, you said that we were faithful and we were just and we would forgive them. Give them another chance. I don't know who I'm talking to today, but you might need another chance. You might need another chance. Romans 10 and 9 says, If thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in thy heart that God is raised from the dead, thou shalt be saved. That's the first one. But if you're here and you need another chance, Jesus has already started praying for you. Oh, come on, somebody. He's already praying for you. He's already praying for you. See, the devil has you in court right now. And what the devil is saying is, they're out there doing drugs. They're out there doing this, that, and the other. But what Jesus says is, but we can forgive it for them all. See, because my blood 
is still saved. Over some 2,000 years ago when I gave my life in their place, I was the ransom. And my blood is still saving today.